This is one of my favorite displays in our paleo hall here at the Houston Museum of Natural Science, and it depicts a megalodon jaw going after a shovel-jawed mastodon. So I'm gonna feed the trolls here for a second. How do scientists come up with this? How did they know, or how do they theorize that a megalodon went after a shovel-jawed mastodon? That's a very good question. Scientists weren't there. We don't know what actually happened, but I'll tell you how we come to such theories. Like all of science, they are based on observations. What do we observe? What can we observe about Megalodon? And what can we observe about the shovel-jawed Mastodon? So a quick little factoid that might surprise a lot of people. We don't have a whole lot of Megalodon left over that we can observe. Like all sharks, like most sharks at least, their bodies are comprised of cartilage. Their bones, so to speak, are made of cartilage and they disintegrate and deteriorate over time. Very rarely does cartilage fossilize. All we really have of Megalodon, for the most part, are its teeth and a partial fossilized jaw. That's it. So how do scientists come up with scenarios like these? Good question. There's a whole lot of CSI going on. It's like crime scene investigation. We find a lot of megalodon teeth in what we call kill sites, where we can see the megalodon was feeding on things, feeding on creatures, such as this shovel-jawed mastodon. In fact, we have in our collection evidence of a megalodon bite mark gouge in a vertebrae. You can see where the tooth fits perfectly within the vertebrae of the animal. And that's how you can theorize, okay, well, if the shoe fits, if the tooth fits, then obviously this animal chewed on, or there's a very high likelihood that this animal chewed upon, fed upon the carcass of this other animal, because we have the evidence all the way here in modern day. We can also draw upon what's called actualism. We have modern predators, we have modern prey, and the damage they do to the prey is in line with the damage done to prey millions of years ago. Same story, different animals, different time. But animals are animals then, animals are animals now. So because we found evidence of Megalodon feeding upon the shovel-jawed Mastodon, that's how we can come up with displays such as this. And if you notice, this display doesn't depict a fully fleshed out, you know, plaster 60 foot long Megalodon. It's the jaw. This is a, re a very reasonable approximation of what a Megalodon jaw looks like based on the evidence that we have. We found lots of shovel jawed Mastodon fossils to reasonably put together what the skeleton looked like in this display. So you start putting two and two together, three and three together, four and four together. It's very reasonable that this is a reasonably accurate depiction of a Megalodon hunting a shovel jawed Mastodon. One thing that's interesting is we find a lot of Megalodon teeth in riverbeds. So in South Carolina, in uh, North Florida, I know for a fact they find a lot of Megalodon teeth. Well, why is that? Didn't Megalodon live in the deep oceans? Yes, it did. Towards the end of its life cycle, the food supply was running out, different extinction events may have occurred. So Megalodon, in a last ditch effort to feed itself, started moving out of deep water to more shallow waters, to more kind of brackish waters, different estuaries and, and rivers that met the ocean. So they would swim up the river where they could fit, and we see modern sharks do this today, to find the food. So Megalodon, during the bulk of its existence, would have fed on whales and other creatures like that. Towards the end of their existence, towards the end of their desperation to survive, they would start feeding on ancient elephants, mastodons, and the like. So this depiction of Megalodon swimming in shallow water to get to the mastodon is not out of question because we find Megalodon teeth at the kill sites with mastodons in riverbeds. So with all of that information, with all of that observation, that's how scientists theorize displays such as this being representative of how the animals lived and how the animals died. I think that's super cool. What about you? Let me know in the comments. Also, we talk a lot about dates, scientific dating, millions of years. We think Megalodon went extinct five or six million years ago. How do scientists come up with that? We did a podcast recently on scientific dating, and it's exactly how scientists come up with the billions of years, the millions of years, the thousands of years. It's not just made up. It's based on what we can observe and what we can test. So if you want to know more about how we come up with these millions of years 
estimates, deep time as it's called, check out the podcast. I will link it in the description and probably the pinned comment on this YouTube video. I've been Johnny Hamburger, your mental curator and the HMNS YouTube and podcast manager. Hope you enjoyed it and hope to see you here at the Houston Museum of Natural Science real soon. Talk to y'all later.